guys, brakes are done. You can see there, the rears are in there all finished. All the brakes are bled. These tires that came on these wheels that were just my temporary wheels, obviously you can see they're a bit cracked and they're a bit knackered. So I thought, well, while I'm at it, I'll treat myself to a new set of wheels. I've got these Acelera 225-4017s, 98 extra load. They're like almost like a track tire. And these are my new wheels. I've gone all out here, guys. I've gone for a 17 by nine World Touring Car Championship ATS wheels. Look at those. Extremely lightweight. And I think they look absolutely awesome. Compare these to the wheels that are on there now. And you can see lots more cooling for the brakes. And also these are much more race van, much more race van. I'm gonna pop these in the car now. And let's put them on and see what they look like. Come with some ATS stickers on. So I've just taken those off. Much prefer the bare look. It's also weight reduction as well. It's not too wobbly. Yeah, like this. See? Do you want me to help you? It's wobbly. Now I don't want to do this side. Okay. I don't want to <laughs> Have you got daddy's new wheels? Oh, just took a little picture for the Instagram. The alloy's got about 40 millimeter. Thank you. The alloy's got about 40 millimeters more poke, so it should stick out nicely and come out flush with the arch. So let's jack it up and have a look. As I was doing up the last nut, the sun came out. That's got to be a good sign, right? So here we go, all fitted. Really happy with how they stick out. I wanted them to stick out a bit. These are an ET23 wheel, so it just pokes them out a bit. To match things up now, I'm going to use the wider plastic arches that you can rivet on. I first saw them on the Team Prawn Racing's uh, A3. I've been following him for a couple of years and uh, he's a bit of a guru on the 20 valve pages. And then also Nick at Decimal Temps has got them as well. You know, it's 20 valve crew. I've kind of got to follow suit now. I'm not sure how they're going to look yet. I think someone had a go at it six months ago, but I haven't seen if it's looked, you know, how we got on with it. I'm going to get an arch roller, take out this lip on the inside fold it over and then get some Faulkner springs to bring this tire to about there I want to make sure I've got about an inch and then some stiffer rear shocks to stop it from bouncing up too much well happy with that that looks awesome there's a Mazda the trusty workhorse that got me up here and here is the T4 we've got rollers here we're at RK Engineering down at St Agnes in Cornwall VAG specialists these guys have helped me out loads in the past with a T4 today we've got a few things to do obviously need to bed the rings in make sure that we can get those seated into the cylinder walls nicely get a few tweaks and bits and pieces Simon's also going to do a nut and bolt check just to make sure that everything's right before he puts it on the dyno we're also going to weigh it see what it weighs so put in the comments below what you think she's going to weigh still got my ply lining and other bits headlining's gone now that weighed 3.6 kilos so that had to go guess in the comments below and we'll find out shortly it's got a full tank of fuel um so that's obviously going to add a fair bit but it'd be nice to see what she actually weighs the first time i've had a chance to get underneath it's so much more comfortable being under in now rather than on the driveway this is going to be really interesting Fourteen forty-six. so without that Full tank of fuel then we're down to 1400 really what a result i'm well happy with that lots and lots of airflow to keep things nice and cool guys this feels awesome seeing it up there now bed the rings in get it all running right and get an mot on her here we go guys not far off now coming down off of revs we're noticing that she's cutting out and the uh, advance is going up to about 30 degrees plus which means that she needs more air on idle really so the VR6 throttle body is sealing up quite nicely which is good putting a mark II idle control valve back on this is what I had on the old setup so I'm just going to re-plumb it in got myself a 3 8 fitting it's about 17 mil on that side and into a 3 quarter inch 19 millimeter on that side and uh, then I'll get it all installed and I'm going to get Jezza to put in a three quarter inch aluminium takeoff here so that we can just plumb it all in. Wind this one in now. Here we go, idle control valve is now mounted, all wired in. Got a diode on this plug side here. I was having a bit of an issue with spikes on the ECU and it turns out you need a diode on the older EMUs. Uh, Jeremy is currently doing some alley welding over here. We've got Adams VX, one of my favorite cars. Nothing I've been in accelerates as fast as this thing here. It's a man himself. Well, yeah, something like that. Absolute monster, AR1s. And we've got Jeremy over here doing some alley welding. 
probably the best Ali fabricator in Cornwall, I reckon, don't you, Adam? Absolutely, Absolutely I reckon, 100%. Jez has done an amazing job, look at that. I am so envious of people that can weld, like I really do, really do hope I can learn to do it at some point. I'll buy a welder and stuff, but to get a decent one, so expensive. When the van's finished, I'll crack on with it and start learning then. There you go, so I've got the takeoff welded onto the pipe now, so I can whack that up there. There's the takeoff, and this bit here now just needs cutting down, and that bit sliding in the middle. Throttle plate goes in the middle, and then what this does is it just allows a bit of air to bleed through from this side, and then back into the inlet manifold. Now what it does mean is obviously when you're on full boost and this is open, it can't really leak anywhere because the pressure here and here is the same. But it does mean that when you're on idle and this is closed, because the OBD2 throttle body doesn't have an idle screw, it just means that you can't actually manually adjust it. So what you are doing instead is you're just allowing this to bypass it so you can let this control the air. I've been running for about half an hour, so dropping the oil. I'm still using the competition running in oil from Miller's. Um, so I'm going to fill a filter up now, whack her on and uh, fill her up with oil again for the next run and then after about 200 miles I'll drop the oil again and then put some fresh stuff in. I've got Greg from RRR just doing a bit of mapping at the moment remotely he's just setting up the ECU and we're probably going to start it up shortly just to get the uh, base map dialed in a bit more and it just shows how good technology is now I mean Greg's right up in uh, near Peterborough aren't you Greg? Yes yes in St. Ives. Yes. Yeah, uh, so. Yeah. so a good five hours away for the moment we just want to get it running safe. So. Hey guys, back at RK. Uh, the boys are working late this evening, so it gives me a chance to come in after work and get a few bits and pieces done. Just before I take her off for MOT tomorrow, which I cannot wait for, because it's the first time I'll be able to properly take her for a drive, um, I'm actually going to make the thing easier to drive. I've got the Audi TT, or Golf Mark V shifter, in here at the moment. It does feel lovely to shift with. The only problem is it's quite a reach. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the stick down. I've got a sleeve here, which is a 12 millimeter internal diameter with a 15 outer, and that slides down over the top, relocate the gear knob to about here, just in line with the handbrake and the hydro. I've got my sleeve here, so I'm just gonna chop this down to two inches, so we've got the ability to sleeve it either side. If you can see there, that's just popping down nicely. And it'll probably go about there, chop to here, with the bar on the top. So now I'm just gonna put the first bend in, get this nice and hot. There you go, just cut a slot to bring the top down to about 10. Obviously that'd be welded in situ. So you can see now we're getting that nice 45, four or five inches across. So I'm going to thread this first to make life easier. And uh, once I've done that, I should then be able to cut it down and then get the final bend put in and then get side to weld it up for me. In order to get the gear knob here, I'm going to need to put a bend about there. So I'm going to mark that out now. Now I'm just putting a thread on the end. Bought this off eBay for two quid. I don't know how well it's going to work yet, but we'll give it a go. Oh, hang on, it's actually worked. <laughs> Perfect, so now I need to put the bend on here. There you go, same again, just getting some heat into it and then we'll bend it. I'm gonna put it inside the sleeve and then bend it on that. There you go guys, all ready to be welded. Now I'm handing over to a grown up. <laughs> there you go guys, there she is. That is absolutely brilliant. Right guys, today's the day. The guys at RK have worked the magic and it's time to go for the MOT. I know there's loads of wind noise, but I'd rather film this than not film it. Put a catalytic converter in on the downpipe um, because obviously otherwise it won't pass emissions. Here we go. We managed to get the uh, gear shifter done last night. I can't believe it. This is actually, a, I'm about to take it for a drive. This is so weird. This is a really surreal moment. Everything feels good, dash is working. Thank you very much Jezza, spot on. Uh, I've got to sort the rev counter out and a few other bits, but I've got my main instruments that I need. <laughs> Here we go. 